All right, in the Ferris wheel problem, you got somebody going around in a Ferris wheel that's making one revolution every two minutes. And um, you're supposed to figure out how fast the person is rising when they're 16 feet above the ground, or maybe it was meters. Um, the uh, radius of the Ferris wheel was uh, 10, I, I think it's meters, let's say 10 meters. And um, so we can put that there, and, and you know, I guess it could also go there. And it can also go here. We're going to need that in a minute. So I'll just put that there. And uh, the idea is the person is kind of up here in a cart going around. And if they're rising, I guess it's going this way. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't really matter which way you arrange this. Um, but we just, you know, how are they rising or falling, I guess would be the same question, right? So um, how do you want to think about this? Well, first of all, this, this has a rotational velocity uh, element to it. That's what, actually what they give us right here uh, when they tell us that the Ferris wheel is going around at one revolution every two minutes. Um, so when you have a problem like that, the first thing you want to do, I think, is identify that rotational velocity in um, the best way you can. So uh, I'm going to call, because we're rotating about this central axis of the Ferris wheel, you want to put an angle there. And I'm seeing this person up here, and I, I'm going to want a triangle. I want a triangle right here so that um, it's a right triangle, right? I've got the altitude that relates to the height of the person because I want to know how fast they're rising. And then there's this other side of the triangle. And there's that constant 10 meters for the hypotenuse. And um, there's an angle here in the triangle that is right at that central axis where it's rotating. That's where you want to put your theta because that's the rate of change we know, right? We know how fast that circle is going around. And so we know how fast that theta is changing. Um, what I would say is this here is telling you d theta dt. So let me write that down. d theta dt is equal to, and then we just need to think of how we can write this. One revolution every two minutes. You can actually write it that way. One revolution per two minutes. That is an angular velocity in revolutions per minute one half revolutions per minute. Um, but I'd rather have it in, I mean, you could put it in three degrees if you want to, but for calculus, I've said we got to do it all in radians. So I want to convert to radians. So one revolution is two pi radians. So I'm changing one revolution to two pi radians. And of course the twos can reduce. And so we get d theta dt is a nice constant pi radians per minute. That's how fast the Ferris wheel is going around. Okay, so that's all, that's, that's the angular velocity part. That's all well and good. Um, what we want to get is how fast this person is rising as the Ferris wheel goes around. And so <clears throat> you want that change in height, right? The height is right there. We could call that H. Um, but that's not in my triangle, right? The H isn't, and I could probably change my figure a little, but like, why, right? This is, uh, I got a nice triangle right up here. And the thing about this triangle compared to H is that the difference, and I'm gonna call this component Y here, this, this like vertical section, the difference between y and h is constant, right? There's this 10 meter gap here that's not changing. So I don't really need h here. I could just look at y, right? If I want to know how fast the person is rising, I can actually just find dy dt, um, and that'll be exactly the same thing as dh dt, right? Because this central axis of the Ferris wheel does not move the same way that the ground doesn't move. So we're looking at a change in y from that static point. So that's my setup. I want to find dy dt at the moment that h is 16. Well, when h is 16, you know, since this is 10, I guess that means y is going to be 6. So when h is 16, that's when y is 6. Um, so I just need an equation then uh, to get that, right? Like I, I, I want dy dt. And I know d theta dt. 
I want dy dt. I know d theta dt. That means I want an equation relating y and theta. So now you go back to your triangle and think, how can I write an equation that relates y and theta? I have a right triangle there. <clears throat> and um, you could even put an x here if you want, but we actually don't even need that, right? We can just use the 10 with the y and uh, sine, right? It gives you opposite over hypotenuse. Sine of theta equals y over 10. You can manipulate this if you want. You could move the 10 up and make it y equals 10 sine theta. Um, I guess I, maybe I should do that. I want to find dy dt, so isolating y isn't bad. It doesn't really matter. The derivative is going to be about the same either way. Um, but since it's nice and easy whoops, to isolate y, I'll go ahead and do it. And uh, y equals 10 sine theta. Take the derivative now with respect to t. dy dt equals, and derivative of 10 sine theta with respect to t is going to be 10 cosine theta d theta dt. And we know d theta dt. That was that pi radians per minute. So now we're just going to plug in um, to find 10 cosine of theta at this moment. Now, it might sound confusing because you might be like, well, we don't know theta, right? We, we could find theta. We could, you know, you could, you could think theta, you know, sine of theta is y over 10, right? And we want it at the moment where y is 6, so you could do like the inverse sine of that. But before you get all trig happy with it, let me just point out, we want the cosine of theta at the moment that y is 6. So here, I'm just going to say this. When h is 16, I've got this triangle with theta. I don't really need to know what theta is. This is the point I'm trying to make. I've got this triangle here where y will be 6. The hypotenuse is a constant 10. And I want, I don't want theta, I want the cosine of theta. So um, cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. I just need to know the adjacent side of that triangle. And you can use the Pythagorean theorem, or maybe you'll recognize 3, 4, 5, right? 6, 8, 10. And so it's actually going to be 8 for the adjacent side. So the cosine of theta is actually 4 fifths or 8 tenths. So there we go dy dt at the moment that h is 16 or that y is 6, however you want to write that, is going to be 10 times that cosine of theta at that moment, which is going to be 8 tenths. You know what? I'm going to write 8 tenths because I have a 10 there and it'll just cancel out nicely. And then times that d theta dt, which is just pi. And so I really just end up with 8 pi which is about like 25-ish, 24, 25, somewhere in there, 3.14 times 8. Um, that's going to be in, since this is a linear measure now, right, and we were using meters, that'll be in meters per minute. Um, that's the result we want. The rider is rising at 8 pi meters per minute. You could use a calculator to convert to a decimal if you want to, um, but I think that's a clean enough answer. That, that could be a non-calculator question, and it'd be fair. All right.